Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your tarot reading. So, um, when I was shuffling up this spread, I had two images that kind of popped up for you. I'm going to relay them, um, the first one first, and then the other one towards the middle of the reading. Because I feel like the energy, there has uh, been like some massive changes happening, okay? And so, the first image, I'm recording this. So I feel like I'm picking up the energy of the first image. So first of all, what I saw was um, I see this man and uh, he's been traveling on foot for a very, very, very long time, okay? And uh, he's carrying like a little uh, pouch with him with his clothing, his personal, you know, effects and, and whatnot. But he's traveling very light and he's kind of travel weary. And he's just a little bit tired, hungry, exhausted. And he just, you know, wants to know like what his des next destination is going to be. And so he comes across this, um, it looks like a, a, an outpost. There's a sign signaling, uh, you know, what direction to go towards. And it's in front of this outpost. And this outpost, there's like a place to rest and, you know, a place to get water, a place to just kind of uh, put his things down and just, you know, relax for a little bit. So he's in this little uh, outpost. It's really pretty though. There are a lot of lanterns that are um, put up. And so it's daytime when he's there and he's just like, I wanna stay here, I wanna uh, see what it looks like at night when the lanterns are all lit up. And he's the only person there. And so he stays and stays and stays and then you know the sun sets and then the lanterns come on. And as the lanterns come on, then he's looking at the signpost that's in front of this rest station. And Funnily enough, it's pointing in two opposite directions, okay, two different directions. On the one side, and this is like kind of like pointing to my left, which is usually what I indicate as like the past. It says the past, and there's the path is lit, and there are lanterns strewn along the way, and it looks really, um, I, I want to say, it looks very inviting. And then pointing to the right is the future and also lanterns strewn along the way and it's um it's really inviting as well so both paths look very very inviting and so where he's at right now it seems to me pretty much like the present okay so he has an option to go to the past or go to the future and it seems like he is in this um rest station he's very comfortable and he's trying to figure out you know where to go okay like where do i go from here what is next? And so, the way this man looks, I just feel like for many of you, um, you're working yourself too hard, okay? You're kind of like grinding yourself into the ground. Um, I don't know if this is, you know, just a lot of things that are happening around you that you have to do damage control on, putting out fires, or even like just taking care of other people. There are a few cards in this spread that indicate to me that, you know, you, you kind of need a lot of time to yourself. Okay, so the first thing that I'm seeing here is the Hermit. And this is pretty much, you know, um, taking the time to kind of be alone, listening to our own voice, not having our decisions or our plans be affected by other people's ideas. Um, by other people's expectations, by what we're supposed to do to please other people. So I do feel like you might have spent a lot of time taking other people's um, advice or, or, considerating, uh, or consideration into account when you're making some major life uh, choices or making some major life decisions. And I feel like for this month, the energy is kind of like telling you to turn inwards a little bit figuring out where you are right now, taking stock of everything that you have in your life and trying to decide on the next step, okay? I do sense, once again, this yearning for something new, this yearning for a journey to start somewhere, like kind of like starting on a, a clean page, okay? Rewriting your story or writing your story, writing the next chapter, and even thinking about like the next adventure that you want to get into, the next thing that you want to kind of like um, swim towards. And I'm sensing that 
you have spent a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, how to juggle between what other people expect of you and what it is that you want out of your life. And I feel like for this month, you're definitely at a point where you're in the driver's seat and you're trying to decide on the next phase and you're trying you need to be making this decision independent of other people what other people want from you what other people expect you to do and just kind of you know listen to your own calling okay um the other two cards that came out in the deck that signify to me the need to really take care of your health and to you know um figure out if there are things like joint pains or aches and pains or whatever ailments or whatever symptoms that you're feeling it is really important to you know take the time prioritize your health um go see a physician if you need to and really you know learn to take care of yourself okay because i feel that i i feel like something some things that have been neglected are starting to bother okay so in this way this can be like a physical symptom like aches and pains here and there and you're just like oh it's not too bad you know i'll um i'll, I'll, I'll tend to it when i have time and then before you know it you know uh, weeks or months might have gone by and you're just like it's really really it's getting worse it's escalating like there's more throbs and more pain but you're just like I'm too busy right now I really don't have to, the time for it so this is the month where you're really going to need to you know take the, the, the day off take care of yourself and to really prioritize whatever it is that needs maintenance on your person or whatever that needs maintenance around you okay so i feel like there's something here it's um seeing this heart and there's a string okay so literally tugging at your heartstrings but what it is is uh, i'm sensing that whatever has been neglected uh, is starting to kind of like get to you is starting to bother you it's starting to kind of um, weave its way back in and it's time for you to address these issues and I feel for many of you it could be health related for others of you it could be like um, um, somebody who might feel a little bit neglected for some of you who have you know family and children this could be making promises to like a child or making promises to a significant other or if you're in a relationship making promises to somebody and being too overworked too overwhelmed and not being able to follow through with the promises and now I feel like it's time for you to revisit these things that have been promised but for whatever reason have never been followed through and then I'm also sensing for some of you, whatever has been neglected, like if there is like lack of communication, if there are things that have been kind of like left without any closure, these things are coming in tugging at you. And I feel like you want to really take the time in the month of December to kind of wrap up these loose ends so that you can figure a way forward, okay? Or you can at least set yourself up for a clean slate when we move into 2020. So December is um, it's the end of the year and it's a time where a lot of people feel like they need to wrap up projects, they need to wrap up things and they need to kind of uh, get themselves ready and to you know bring about the new year, bring about the new energy. So it's sort of like that last push for us to take care of things. Um, you know tie up loose ends, take care of unfinished business so that we can kind of cast them aside and move into a clean slate so that's what I'm feeling right now um, I keep seeing especially for many of you um, like pains in the lower extremities joints um, ankles legs knees things like that and even like um, you know like um, we have here the Ten of Swords, and the Ten of Swords is needing a lot of, um, it, it's like generalized pain, like body aches, needing to go to see a massage therapist, needing needing like, you know, like a deep, um, like acupressure, almost like type of uh, a, a massage, needing to work out all those knots and all those, um, you know, the, all the tension in the back of your neck of all throughout your body so that you can feel release okay so i feel like there's some physical symptoms here that might be keeping you up at night that might be hindering 
And overall, I feel like you know stress and lack of sleep that might be getting in the way of you,、uh, of your performance during the day. Okay, so whatever it is that is、uh, has been neglected, it is time to really address these issues, and it is time to you know find a solution, wrap up loose ends, and and move forward. Okay.、Um, the other image, funnily enough, is.、Um, I literally see this、uh, green little green leprechaun, okay, and he's got that hat with the、um, three-leaf clover on it, and、um, he's like literally dancing around in a field of clover, okay, just like jumping around, kind of laughing. So I'm seeing like just a field of green, and so this spells to me a lot of luck. A lot of、uh, transformation when it comes to things, and I feel like it's a continuation, a little bit of、um, the last month's reading where I mentioned there might have been some unintended consequences, and I mentioned they weren't that bad. And it's like you you do something and you you were thinking like oh no, it's going to lead to a specific outcome, but then the outcome is expect、uh, is like. Um, totally unexpected, totally outside of the realm of possibility. So I see that energy coming in with the field of clover, which signifies, you know, tremendous luck, just abundance, having really, really good luck on your side. And then this leprechaun just jumping up and down all around this field of clover. So what I feel as well is、um, I really sense. There is some very strong spiritual protection here. Okay, we have here the Four of Wands. You are in、um, kind of like being blessed, being、um, being enclosed or encased in a sacred space where things, bad energies, bad intentions, bad people,、uh, bad situations will not affect you. Will not kind of like burst your bubble. And will not have any bearing on you. Okay, so I feel like for many of you, there is some really, really strong divine protection. Protection coming in from family, especially from people that have passed on, who ha- are you know looking over you, or especially protection from family who really trust you, who uphold or will who will try to uphold your honor or who will try to uphold your、um, reputation. So, for example. Ah,、uh, just an example. Okay, I don't feel like this is going to apply to you, but what I feel is like,、um, for example, somebody might say like, I don't know if I trust the Gemini to follow through on what they say, and somebody from your family unit might say like, No, the Gemini has never,、um, you know,、uh, um, proven them like proven. But the Gemini has never backtracked on their words, so I hold them. I take them at face value and I hold them to their words. So I feel like there is, you know, like a. It's a narrative indicating to me that somebody from your family unit or somebody that you consider family, they're going to stand up for you. They're going to say really good things about you, and they're going to kind of like change a situation around based on how convincing they are when they speak or vouch for your character. So I feel like it's a very, very strong sense of like spiritual protection coming through from the family unit, and especially if you have members of your family that have passed on, there's very strong divine protection, and there's a lot of communication and messages as well. Coming through, especially for people that have passed on. Okay, we have the death card, and this is not meant to be spooky or scary. We have the death card and the bird here, which indicates to me communication. Okay, I understand that for some of you, you've been feeling a little bit trapped for a while. Okay, and I feel like、um, the energy was very, very tense over the summer. Okay, especially like around your birthday time. Um, you had a lot on your plate. You had a lot of things that were, I almost feel like anxiety、uh, provoking. Okay, anxiety inducing, anxiety provoking,、uh, lack of restful sleep,、um, not being able to quiet your mind. Okay, and 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 we're talking like staying up,、um, thinking about a lot of things. Some of them are real things. Some of them are imagined. So like. Uh, real scenarios versus imagined scenarios. Some of them crisscross, and you're just like 
up at night, you're you're constantly um, back and forth thinking about things, thinking about like how things are gonna play out, thinking about what direction to to take. And I'm literally seeing like um, that that same traveler, and they're like you know ten roads just forked out ahead of him, and he doesn't know which path to take. Okay, so I just feel like you've been feeling this way, especially since your birthday, late May, and um, the beginning part of June, you've been feeling like responsibilities were piling on. You didn't have time to yourself. You you didn't have time to really be alone with your thoughts and to figure things out and to be very definitive with the decisions that you're making. And so you you felt almost like you were spinning in circle. Like which way do I go? I just feel like I'm in this endless feedback loop and I really can't break out of it. And then I also feel like the month of November, okay? As we are doing this reading and as you have already experienced the beginning of November, some major things have come into the picture to kind of like solidify things, to give you more information, to solidify, I guess, some of the decisions and some of the, of the choices that you need to make. And you know, those um, seven different forks in the road have kind of, um, I, I want to say coalesce, converge, almost like a, a convergence. And so coming into this month of December, I see like the choices are narrowed down, past or future, okay? And you're just like in a position where you're going to have to choose. And I feel like once again, both paths are lit up with those lanterns, which indicate to me that, you know, they are just as... Uh, Neither one is more favorable. They are just as good. And I feel that either way that you, you choose to take, you're going to be safe. You're going to be protected. And I feel like there will be another rest stop along the way for you to rest, for you to reassess your decision. So whatever decision you're making is not final. Does that make sense? It's not a final destination just yet. You're still continuing your journey. And so whatever decision that you make is a continuation. And at any point in time, if you don't, I guess like if you don't um, find yourself enjoying the route or enjoying the, the road that you're taking, you can always backtrack and you can always, you know, go back to the starting point and start over. So I do feel like, I do feel like it's a continuation of the journey that you're, you're going on or you're embarking on and there isn't a right or a wrong. Okay. So that's the first thing. Um, or rather that's the second image. Um, really needing time to yourself, making decisions independent of other people, and being able to be resolute and sticking to a certain path, okay? I feel like will be really beneficial for you because you have been spending so much time ruminating, ruminating over our choices, decisions, um, you know, where to live, where to stay, um, how to take care of this problem, how to take care of that. And all of it was really just weighing down on you. And you just felt like things were happening to you. You felt like you didn't have control over the things that were going on in your surrounding. And so this is a, a month to really reclaim that sense of, you know, free will, that sense of agency in your own life and to figure out, you know, what path is best for you as an individual rather than you as a unit. Um, there are a few more messages. They didn't come out in um, pictures, but they did come out, you know, verbally. Um, one of them, I, I'm sensing here like this sense of family, okay? Um, family can be like a, a tremendous safety net, okay? I have here the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups is um, it's like the ideal family situation. Um, for some of you, I do sense this overwhelming like um, romanticism. This overwhelming sense of romanticism when it comes to the family. Um, you might have grown up in somewhat of a dysfunctional family or even a family that was like unconventional 
um, non-traditional in some way, okay? Or even, I, I feel for some of you, like a broken home. And you're trying so hard to, you know, if you have children, you're trying so hard to give them everything that you didn't have, okay? You're trying so hard to give them like that sense of normalcy, that sense of traditional family unit. And you're struggling so hard to provide them with everything. And I feel like it's taken its toll on you. And I also feel like, you know, uh, wanting to create kind of like an idyllic, um, romanticized image of what family should be at the expense of truly feeding into the emotional, you know, the, the nurturing of that family unit. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you. Because I feel like in the spirit of trying to create that idyllic, you know, um, mom, dad, two kids, um, car in the garage, picket, uh, white picket fence, you know, that, that nice little country home. Um, the emotions are not there. So you might be working really, really hard to sustain the family and you might not have time to be emotionally or physically available for the people in that family unit, okay? You might be struggling really, really hard to take care of mom and dad and you're working all the time and you're not really home to kind of like enjoy, you know, a family dinner with them. So I'm seeing here where something is done in a very counter, uh, per, like, counterintuitive way to achieve something or a vision of something when in fact the emotions are all that is needed in this situation so I hope that makes sense for, for um, some of you um, so what I'm seeing here is to kind of like realign yourself with the fact that you know really getting down to the nitty-gritty of what is really important it's the emotional closeness it's the emotional availability how emotionally available you are to the people who need you when they need you and going using that as kind of like the barometer or the gauge of what you're expected to do okay so i feel almost like um since the summertime you're doing things that you feel people expect of you but you're not really asking the people whether or not this is something that they want you to do for them. So I feel like you, you might be working based on false expectations because you thought that's what they wanted, but all along that was not what they wanted. That was never discussed and that was never like explicitly said. And what I feel is you're realigning yourself and trying to get to the bottom of, you know, what is it that the other person might expect from me? For some of you, I do feel heavy energies of family, okay? Um, I see a lot of people here with, um, you know, so for example, um, I do see the situation where, you know, for example, okay? And I feel like this might apply as well. Um, mom and dad, you know, they, they might want you to be in a specific profession. Um, but they never forced it on you. They might occasionally say, oh, oh, you know, being a doctor is such a, um, an admirable, um, profession, but they never expected you to grow up, you know, go through med school, be racked in, you know, debt, you know, like student loan debt to pursue this goal and working like 80, 90, um, hours a week to be a doctor and never have any time for yourself and never have any time for family and never have any time to see them. So I feel like you thought they wanted some something, but you never asked them and you did it anyways. And then it turns out that that was not what they wanted. Okay. I'm also seeing this playing out in relationship where you thought the partner might want something from you. So you did it. And then it turns out that that was just, you know, very, very low on the bottom of their list of priorities. And so I feel this is a good month to kind of like reassess between you and another person, especially a family member, a relationship um, or a significant other, a relationship partner or a significant other, other to kind of like realign yourself and figure out expectations. Okay. 
what do you expect from them? What do they expect from you? And you're going to start to realize that you have to recalibrate because you might have been way off when it comes to assessing what they're expecting from you or they might have been way off, you know, based on what they thought you were expecting from them. I do feel though it's coming a little bit more from the your end where you thought they wanted something. You spent so much time and energy to work towards that and turns out that wasn't what they wanted at all. So, you know, unintended consequences or unintended side effects or something you thought was one way is turning out to be something different. And something that you thought was very very difficult to achieve you felt like it was done and over with there's nothing i can do to fix this situation and then you know you turn around and it seems like a very very quick fix okay so that's that's what i'm feeling here the an, another message that is coming through as well is um i do sense there is a person here um the person is showing up as a fire energy, so Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, but I, I do feel the energy is, um, I'm not reading so much like, you know, the signs, I'm reading the person. So we have here the Queen of Wands. And the way this card is showing up, it indicates to me that somebody didn't realize how their actions or how their words have affected you okay um i have you dealing here with somebody who's very blunt very blunt very light no nonsense they don't mince words they don't really sugarcoat they don't sugarcoat um whatever comes to mind whatever comes to their mind comes out of their mouth and they're very very unfiltered okay when they're upset there's like fire and fury when they're happy, there's a lot of love. There's a lot of just um, warmth in their presence, okay? So I feel like you're, you're dealing with someone who is uh, very emotionally expressive, verbally expressive. When they're hurt, they're going to tell you that they're hurt. And um, I feel like there was something that happened and this person did not realize uh, to what extent they hurt you. This person didn't realize that what they said was insensitive. This person didn't realize that what they said um, undermined you or what they said was, um, I want to say like was either condescending, was either kind of like hitting below the belt or um, it, it just felt to me like it was unexpected, unintended. And so there's going to be communication coming in to kind of clear this situation between you and this person. I'm also feeling as well, um, when you're wounded, you really withdraw, okay? When you're wounded, you don't want to talk about, like, you don't want to sit there and talk about, like, um, you said this and then it made me feel this way, or I said this and then you start to withdraw, you start to retaliate. I feel like, you know, discussing feelings and emotions, it's not your cup of tea. It's not a, a, um, something that you want to spend time thinking about, talking about, and having long, you know, discussions into the night about these emotions. Like, it, it makes you uncomfortable. And so these things were never properly discussed or addressed with another person. Um, I'm also seeing as well difficulties um, dealing with the mother figure and um, where somebody is... Um, is a little bit like unfiltered with the things that they say. It could be, you know, dealing with someone who's who's very critical, who um, it's hard for them to give you a compliment. It's hard for them to express, you know, gratitude and 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 um, it's just hard for them to express gratitude. It's hard for them to give compliments. It's hard for them to praise. It's hard for them to, you know. I, I just feel like they lack that in their own life and so it's really hard for them to pay compliments to other people and I also feel it's hard for them to pay compliments to you they might have felt it they might have wanted to say it but for whatever reason when it comes it just never came out I just feel like it never came out and so you weren't really sure how you 
where you stand with this person. You weren't really sure if what you were doing was pleasing to them, or you weren't sure if they're, you know,、um, critical of you. And so, what I do feel as well is, you might have been, you know, under like,、um, you might have been living in the self doubt based on your interaction with this person, and it colors the way in which you acted with other people. You know, not being able to pay compliments, not being able to open up emotionally, not being able to, you know, kind of.、Um, Open yourself up to pay other compliments, to give gratitude, to give thanks, and to be emotionally present for other people. So I do see here a little bit of a、um, a hang up, and I do feel that you know since for the past few months you have been made aware of this, and you're trying your best to kind of like you know. Turn yourself inside out to to kind of change this part about yourself, to make yourself a lot more emotionally available, and to make yourself kind of like、um, get out from under the energy of this person. It's not so much physically the person that's still in your presence, but it's the energy that you've had to live with and had to contend with when you were dealing with this person. So now you're getting out from under that energy, so that you can. Start again, okay. We have here the page of sword,、um, the page of wands. This is starting on a brand new journey, in a very passionate and excited way. This is feeling that sense of like childhood innocence, where it's like、um, you're not thinking about worst case scenarios. You're just thinking about all the positive things that are waiting for you around the corner, okay. It's very childlike innocence, and I feel like you're embodying this energy. Where you're walking through situations and not expecting worst case scenarios, not expecting things to fail, but being a lot more open-minded about, you know, this is new. I don't know what's going to happen, so I'm just going to go for it. So I, I do feel like this childlike innocence is coming back in for a lot of Gemini's.、Um, I felt like the energy has been very, very heavy since the summertime, and so. Now that we are transitioning into the end of the month, I feel like you have a better sense of direction. You have a lot more clarity about what you need to really kind of like cast off and leave behind, and then which direction you need to go towards. Okay. For many of you, you have a very, very、um, loving and supportive partner around you. Okay. I have here the King of Cups, and the King of Cups is someone who's very emotionally、uh, mature. And what I mean by this is,、um, for a lot of air signs in general,、uh, emotional maturity is what we really look for in a partner. Okay, emotional maturity basically means someone who's,、um, for me at least, and I feel like in this reading, the way it's depicted with this King of Cups, it's somebody who doesn't make decisions or say things out of a space of ego. They're very aware of their intentions. They're very aware of their feelings. They're very aware of who they are as a person, what they feel, what their motives are, what they're hoping to achieve. So it's somebody that doesn't use your feelings against you. It's somebody that doesn't manipulate situations,、uh, tell a false narrative in order to, you know, steer your mind towards a specific like.、Um, To to bias you, okay, and it's somebody who is like、um, they they give and they love without strings attached, okay. They want what's best for you, and if what's best for you means that you can you know go off on your own path, you're no longer with them. They're okay with that because they're emotionally just mature. They understand that you know everyone has free will, and they don't try to manipulate situations or circumstances to lock you down on a specific course of action that they want you to take.、Um, they don't, you know, give you like、um, they don't withhold information so that you don't have full access to information to make the best optimal decision for yourself. And at the same time. They don't hold back on how they feel. They're going to be very clear with you verbally, verbally,、um, how they feel 
about you at all times. So, you know, this is a person that doesn't play games. This is a person who's very honest with their feelings. Um, what I'm feeling though, and I mentioned earlier that, you know, for Gemini's, sitting down and talking about feelings and talking about, you know, how your, how your actions, you know, affect my feelings, those are not conversations that come naturally to an air sign like yourself. Okay, but you have somebody in your midst that's like a, a very good counterpart or a very good like balance to the way in which you operate. Okay, um, for many of you in the past, it's sort of like you know when when things get uncomfortable, when things get a little bit too emotionally heavy or draining, you crack a joke and 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 everyone laughs, and then you can you know gracefully kind of sl uh, slink away from whatever it is that made you uncomfortable. Okay. It's like causing a distraction and then slinking away, slipping out of this conversation because it made you uncomfortable. But I feel like this person time and time again, they're forcing you to kind of like face up to these conversations and it can feel a little bit uncomfortable. But I feel like you have an opportunity here to kind of really open up, to, to, to kind of communicate and I'm trying to figure out what the point of this is, okay? And I'm still getting there. So I feel that they're helping you. It's a very stable person in your life who is helping you to be emotionally, you know, open. And you feel really safe with this person. And this might be the only person that you really, um, you trust wholeheartedly and you trust that no matter what, they're not going to use your feelings against you, okay? And then I also feel like there might have been a, a, a parental figure that might have been critical, that might have used your feelings against you, that might have um, been a little bit manipulative. And so you're getting out from under that because you're starting to understand from this person the proper way to behave, the proper way to express yourself. This, um, it's like creating, somebody has created like a little safe space for you to, you know, feel at ease and to feel like you can be vulnerable and you can still feel very, very safe, okay? You can be emotionally vulnerable, but it doesn't mean that uh, anyone's going to come in and, you know, attack you or anyone's going to come in and use whatever you've said or whatever your feelings are against you to manipulate you into doing things or even to force you or even to, you know, um, change the dynamics in some way to get you to do whatever they want that you might not want to do so you feel very very safe and you feel as if you have like a confidant um, a person that you can confide in because they don't have ulterior motives in their interaction with you okay and i feel like you're starting to see that now in the past you have been very very um I want to say battle scarred okay so once again i'm drawn to these two cards nine of wands having your armor up okay this is like um, a wounded soldier this is somebody who's been to war who has seen the carnage and uh who's still you know in 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 flight or fight mode adrenaline is, is still coursing through their veins and they're trying to figure out like is it done and over can i kind of rest or do I need to, you know, be vigilant? Do I need to keep one eye open throughout the night to make sure that no one is going to, you know, come back and attack me? So this is like very, it's it's um, it's a space of like, even if you're sleeping, you're not getting restful sleep, okay? And this is why I would advise you, um, take a mental health day, you know, stay in bed, watch some movies, do whatever it is to kind of like in, turn off your, your brain, okay? Mindless things to turn off your brain. But getting enough sleep, getting like, you know, full bed rest, that's really important. And this is not a, a space where we can be making, you know, decisions um, that would uh, affect the trajectory of our life, okay? When we're operating from this fight or flight type of a response, we're not making decisions from the higher chakras, okay? This is like survival mode. And so I feel like you kind of need to, you know, let the wands down, let the walls down and take care of yourself and, and realize as well that you're in a safe space, that you don't need to be 
like riled up or you don't need to be hyper vigilant about what's gonna come in okay so I feel that it's it's really time for you um, to to let this energy go we have ten of swords as well betrayal and now being very weary about who to trust okay so many of you are learning to trust again learning to love again after a situation has gone sour okay so I feel like in the past something has really gone downhill and I feel like it was very swift very fast very unexpected it brought about a major transition or a major shift in your energy you're able to kind of like cast this aside and whoever it was or whatever the situation was they're kind of wondering you know what exactly happened they're kind of like um it's like a, a i keep hearing like a raised eyebrow like I'm confused what exactly happened so I feel like somebody is left wondering what exactly happened and for a Gemini to not communicate it basically means that you've cut off our ties you've cut off your emotions towards this person because now they're left very confused they're left perplexed and they're left like wondering what exactly happened and you're not giving them the time of day you're not giving them an explanation and you're not giving them you know um, the benefit of it, it's like I don't owe you anything anymore so you're, you've kind of cut this person off and you're beginning anew and so I do feel like there was whatever it was the situation was it could be a person it could be you know just circumstances and a lot of things that you have to contend with and now you're leaving that behind and what's in store for you with that you know leprechaun in a field of clover that I saw was there's still a little bit of lingering doubts in your mind as to, you know, everything that's happening in my future is very abundant for many of you. You have brand new projects that you're taking on. You're in a position where you have a lot of support, okay? You have like family support, family protection, as well as, you know, a relationship partner even who is very, very um, emotionally available and who's very supportive of you. That you can always come to when the world is is icy and cold or when things don't go the way that you expected you can always kind of rely on this person as like your emotional anchor it's somebody who stabilizes you they give really good advice as well and I feel like you know their advice is very unbiased because like I said they're emotionally just mature and then I'm also seeing this um, spiritual energy coming through where you're starting to feel the abundance around you okay if you were feeling like this ten of swords the beginning of the month or even as we transition through the month of november towards the end of the year oh, i'm sorry yeah towards the end of the year because we're in december towards the middle of the month even in december going into the end of the year we have the ten of cups and then the four of wands the four of wands is about stability I mentioned before it's a, a happy family unit okay everybody is taken care of things coming back full circle there's a lot of celebratory energies reuniting with families reuniting with friends and people that you kind of like hold as um, as your inner circle and then we have as well the ten of cups which is kind of like the apex of emotional uh, happiness satisfaction getting support and getting it's like you know how when you take like a family photo and you look at it and it's sort of like it, it hits you that wow everybody I love is in the same room okay everybody I love is here everything that I can hold in the palm of my hand is is you know right here so I feel like you know getting to the essence of what's really really important to you and it's not so much the home the picket fence the the, the car the the children or you know the having a, the exact amount of children is pretty much the people that really capture your heart and so what I'm feeling is um, the sense of you know gratitude coming in if gratitude has been lacking because you know you you grew up and it was never given freely it was never given without uh, strings attached you're starting to learn to to kind of like 
give gratitude in a way that is very genuine, in a way that is sincere, in a way that breaks old habits and old patterns regarding these human, I want to say, interactions that might have been very um, stunted, very cold, and not, um, I want to say that that doesn't really contribute to the emotional openness in an interaction between people okay so i feel like you know breaking old habits and old patterns and ways of relating to another person getting to the essence of what's really important and i do sense that through this process where you are growing um, there has been somebody very significant that has been there with you you know they they've really taught you to how to emotionally open up and how to be a healthy relationship partner and how to you know reciprocate not only with words but with actions okay um, you have a lot of support coming into the picture Gemini so if you've been feeling um, anxious if you've been feeling overwhelmed if you've been feeling just down um, you know like um, getting ready to throw in the towel I feel or if you've been feeling like is this what life is all about just drudgery um, I do sense that December is going to bring about a new sense of renewal for you and it's going to exceed your expectations okay and a lot of it just hinges upon you know being around people that are, are good for you that are emotionally just not petty all right so I hope the reading is helpful. I do wish you all the best. Have a wonderful holiday season. Um, if you are interested in a reading, I do have a link in the description box below for a psychic. Her name is Bridget, and she's based out of California. And uh, if you're looking to get a reading for yourself or for someone you know, I highly recommend you get a reading with her, okay? I will leave it at that. I wish you all the best, and take care of yourself.